So what you're watching right now is me load the Air Riser XQ2. Um, my filter that I have in here has gotten a little bit worn down because there's not that many reasons to change it because it doesn't get that clogged because it never really gets wet or soggy or anything like that. But it has heated up so many times now that it's a little bit loose. So what I typically do, and this is just tips after having an air riser for a very long time. If you see here, um, I am using an iPhone, so not the best focus, but in the filter, there's tree in there. And so once it's kind of like pretty brown or like mostly most of the green's done, I typically knock it. So right now I have tree on the tray. I am essentially going to take this end of the air riser XQ2 and I'm using the whip right now, not the bag attachment. I'm going to load flour just in this part. This is how I load my XQ2 because I know a lot of you guys probably didn't see my last video from a couple years ago. But now you see there's green in there. A little bit fell down but it fell on the tray. And then I load it in. So with the last bowl, or when this gets finished, I'll typically kind of like knock that like ashier or more brown flour down in there. I'll just completely finish it off in this bottom chamber part down here. And then I will puff on what's ever in the top. But guys, it's been a while since I talked about the XQ2. I did a review on it a few years back when I got it from Air Riser and and I loved it then, but I also feel like the real telltale signs of like dry air vaporizers or how long they last you is how long they last you. I've had so many over the years and so many have just failed me. This is also the product that I probably get hit up the most about, Jesus. Got that ash all over the edge, not even ash, just old bud. So, Let's see how my XQ2 is holding up after two years. So this is a hose. I believe I got two hoses. Um, my other hose looks very similar to this. As you can see, it has caught a lot of the extra gunk over the years. And so this may be something that somebody would want to replace. It doesn't bother me that much. It doesn't really affect the taste or anything like that. And it catches a lot of it. And obviously you saw the top um, nozzle part right there it can be cleaned but these pieces aren't easy to clean and I'm the type of person is when I start cleaning it then I get sketched out if there's alcohol or stuff left in there if there's too much res like I feel like and maybe I'm tripping on this but I feel like the alcohol and the salt or whatever stuff you could have used could just be sitting on the glass stuck to that res so I like it completely clean if it gets cleaned or I'd rather not clean it at all but these are pieces, especially like this nozzle. Um, some of these tips, no, these tips are easy to clean. Some of the stuff's easy to clean, but stuff like this tube, the bag, even that top nozzle, they're things that I suggest you replace unless you wanna spend a lot of time cleaning or it's just something a big deal to you to like really scrub it out or you just, you don't care if there's like some alcohol res in there or whatever i have no idea what your situation is but that is definitely something that i would say is worth replacing over really trying to clean it unless somebody out there has a really great method then feel free to put that in the comments there we go i have it set to 390 right now with the pink bottom I do have some questions that I've gotten recently, and so I'm just gonna kind of list them off in my head. And the first question I got was whether I use the whip or the bag more often, and the answer for sure is the whip for multiple reasons. One, the whip for some reason feels more shareable. The bag doesn't feel like it should be shared, and, and you're still smoking on either this like plastic tip or the um, glass tip, whichever. But if I'm smoking with a group, I don't mind as much with this, but the bag feels more personal. That's one reason, not even the biggest reason. The biggest reason is probably noise. Um, I like to just carry this around and not have to like having a trash bag with you. 
um, everywhere you go. If Nicole's asleep or taking a nap or something like that, that's super annoying for her to have to hear. I feel like the bud, not I feel like the bud, definitely lasts longer if there's no fan blowing on it because the only thing that's really heating up the bud each time is you pulling. So it can sit in the chamber and be okay. But when it's a bag, it's like literally just hot air just being pushed over it. And so it's, it's for sure burning it off way faster. Like with the whip, it lasts for so much longer than it would in terms of bag lengths, but you're gonna get high faster or you're gonna get lit faster, whatever you wanna say, faster with the bag. So, um, but I don't care about that. I'll just sit there with the tube and just puff on it for a while, just like a hookah or something like that. So I definitely use the whip more. And I could have told you that before, but actually no, I didn't have the XQ2 before. I had another air riser that doesn't have that bag feature. Um, and then I also learned about the glass pieces because I tried to clean some of the glass pieces from the bag and it just didn't go right. And because it didn't go right now, I, the bag is pretty much like indisposed to me and stuff, but I prefer the whip anyway. Obviously, simply the question, what I suggested. I suggested it when I first got it, and I still suggest it now because the only way I see this breaking is like dropping. I've actually dropped one before. I've had maybe three of these now, um, and I still have one that does partially work. No, that, that does work. This is just the newest one, so I use this, and I have the handheld as well, and none of them have broken on me. Um, Air Riser makes really good, sturdy, products i've enjoyed this one a lot i've enjoyed the handheld and used it so many times now over the last like three years it's actually crazy that i got it maybe almost like four years ago with the handheld i feel like so it's been a whole different experience than when i used to buy vapes and buy multiple ones and maybe buy one that was a little bit cheaper obviously i hope anybody out there knows that you can't you really used to not be able to go cheap with dry air vapes. Maybe there are cheaper options now. The Air Riser brand runs so many deals, and this isn't sponsored or anything, but they run so many deals that like, I get the emails. I'm like, that's a good deal. They'll get, because they'll have like the tabletop. I remember a friend of mine and I, he needed, I needed a tabletop, he needed a handheld, and they did a buy one tabletop, get a handheld free, and then we just split the cost. Like you could do something like that. And so it's a great deal for what you get considering I'm a couple years in and I'm still very pleased with with the purchase. And I do say all that to say, so if you did have to replace some of these top glass pieces, it's definitely way cheaper than if you went to a cheaper brand and you had to replace the whole unit over and over again. Because it probably would get dirtier. I do like smoking J's, so I will often smoke J's. And then really when I want to save money or if I don't want it to be as loud for whatever reason or... I mean, if I just... And feeling this vibe because I feel like the dry air vaporizer gives you a little bit more energy than rolling up. And so if that's what I'm wanting, then I'll hit this. But somebody who used this every day, all day, or like all the time, it would be even dirtier than this. I will tell you that. Because I've smoked other people's air risers that were way worse than this. But since it's not being burned, I feel like it's just a different feeling. Some people I feel like would really not like it looking like this. Um, and having this much bud and stuff. Damn, I think something pulled through like a leaf or something and stuck in there now. But regardless, I feel like some people really not like it looking like this, but it doesn't bother me that much. Not as much as like a filthy bong or something like that. Sheesh. So two years in, still getting pretty big clouds. I said 390. I could turn it up a lot. I've also talked to some people. Some people like really big clouds. Let me just do it for the video. I'm gonna turn it up to like 410. I actually never do this, so I'm actually kind of curious. I'm always trying to preserve the bud. Even 390 is high for me to start a bowl at. Usually I would start a bowl at like 380. I'm not worried about seeing smoke. I know. 
most people are worried about seeing the smoke come out. This doesn't bother me at all. Let me see. Because I know it's still working. Yeah, you can get those bigger clouds as you turn it up. Sheesh. <coughs> I'm puffing on some of this Rocky Road. Rocky Road from Uncensored. When I go to the dispenser here, they'll have deals. Like, even that was like. 36 bucks at the dispensary, but you still leave like, bro, they just robbed me. I just got robbed, no mask, no gun, no weapon, no anything. Like, it's still, I still left spending close to like $50 and I did not want to spend $50. Taxes, ATM fees, all that stuff. It is what it is, so the prices are going down. Having even something at menu price that's at $36 in a dispensary when I moved here two years ago was unheard of. I feel like it was longer than two years ago I did this Air Riser video. I have to go back and check. If you've been rocking with me since that Air Riser video, you're a real one. If you've pulled up recently, you're still a real one. I'm gonna have some more sessions talk about some more subjects. If there's something about the Air Riser or if I should talk about the handheld that I have, um, if there's something you want to know about it uh, that I didn't cover in this video, I really just wanted to show y'all that it's alive and well. The session's alive and well. Still getting me lit. You could probably see it in my eyes. But yeah, appreciate it guys. It's been another one. I'll see you guys next time.